It is one of the great venues in the National Football League, CenturyLink Field in Seattle, and the fans of the Pacific Northwest are ready to be that 12th man for the Seahawks again today against the visiting Jacksonville Jaguars. And today's game is being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Jacksonville won the toss. They've deferred to the second half. Seattle will receive to start the game. 59 degrees and rainy as we start play today here in Seattle. 88 consecutive sellouts here in Seattle, 67,000 plus. Gus Bradley making his return to Seattle, ready to face the monster he created in four years as the Seahawks defensive coordinator. And Pete Carroll celebrated his 62nd birthday last week by getting that huge win over the 49ers in his fourth year here in Seattle. Scobie kicks it away. Jermaine Curse is back deep and brings it out. Driven out of bounds around the 18-yard line. Russell Wilson brings the Seahawks out. He's never lost a game here at CenturyLink Field. A perfect 9-0. 18 touchdown passes, only three interceptions here. Felt like he missed some throws last week against the 49ers, but he's an impressive young man and the unquestioned leader now of this Seattle offense. Well, with Gus Bradley being the defensive coordinator of the Seahawks, this Seahawk offense is going to be looking at a mirror image of their own defense just different players but exactly the same philosophy Go from the gun low snap lynch drives forward a little extra pushing and shoving after the whistle seahawks up front paul mcquiston the former jag takes over for the pro bowl left tackle Russell Okung, who's out for the next eight weeks with a toe injury. James Carpenter slides in at left guard. The backs and receivers. The Seahawks, of course, will run first offense, and that means the Jaguars will see a lot of number 24, Marshawn Lynch, as the Seahawks go into beast mode to set things up for Russell Wilson in the passing game. Second and six. Lynch. Tough running inside. Picks up a couple. Jacksonville on defense. Up front, a lot of new faces. The former Eagle, Jason Babin, will try to put some pressure on Russell Wilson. The linebackers, Paul Puzlozzi, is active. Consistently, Jacksonville's leading tackler. And two new corners, but they're excited about the rookie, Jonathan Cyprian, at strong safety. They think he can be a fixture and a playmaker to build that secondary around. Lowry helped off the field. Dwight Lowry, the veteran safety, who has been a big help with uh, Cyprian. Let's see what happened. Right there. I mean, he got lit up by Golden Tate. Was not expecting that physical play from the wide receiver and paid the price for it. Wow. Empty backfield. Third and four. Just on the way here in Seattle. Wilson guns it incomplete. So three and out for Seattle. Doug Baldwin was the intended receiver. That's one of the things about this Seattle Seahawks defense. Russell Wilson is a smart, very instinctive quarterback. The ball comes out on time. It's really hard for a defensive front to find Russell Wilson with the ball in his hand. They may get him once in a while, but he won't have the ball by the time they get there. He's just too smart. John Ryan came in averaging about 46 yards a punt. It's that away. Rockman fields it, and brought down immediately by Jeremy Lane. Great coverage on special teams, a 47-yard punt, and negative on the return. Chad Henney starting again this week with Blaine Gabbert still out with the laceration on his throwing hand. Henney, one of the bright spots for Jacksonville last week. Going 25 of 38, 241 yards and a touchdown. No interceptions through the first two weeks. The mark is forward. Progress on the return at the 25, and that's where Jacksonville will take over for their first possession. You can prepare all week with crowd noise and loud music at practice, but nothing really prepares you for the atmosphere that is this field. Bobble snap, and Henny has to fall on it. It's an inauspicious start for the offense. And this is, I mean, there are a lot of ball, 
balls that hit the turf during warm-ups. A lot of receivers having trouble making catches. A lot of snaps that were fumbled during the pre-game warm-ups of both teams. So you can expect that both teams are going to have an extra concern of just that kind of thing happening. The game be plan, difficult to handle. Excuse the, me, though. The game plan, Steve, was not to go no huddle as much today because of the crowd and the fact that it's hard to call plays at the line of scrimmage. Jones drew up the middle, great penetration, and he's dropped immediately by Tony McDaniel. Yeah, I mean, it, this crowd is a factor. There's just no question about it. A lot has been made. They set the world record for decibel level in a, in a stadium, a pro sports stadium, last week against the 49ers. And you and I were talking before the game that the, when they introduced this team coming out of the tunnel, it was less... We had to keep our headphones on because you really couldn't even talk in the booth without having a microphone to the to the speakers on your ears. I mean, it was really that loud. Negative yardage in the first two plays, so third and 13. Justin Forsett in the backfield with Henny, who guns it, but well short of a first down. Caught out at the 27-yard line by the rookie, Ace Sanders, a gain of five. We'll see the punting unit. It really is a factor mostly because these teams come in, particularly like Jacksonville here, who has been a no-huddle, very quick-paced offense during the season. They have to change their philosophy a little bit to combat the atmosphere in this stadium, and we'll see if they can get it done. Golden Tate back deep, a short punt. Tate takes it on a bounce and dropped at the 30. Pushed back, but his forward progress will be marked at around the 30-yard line, a 49-yard punt, and we are underway. Jacksonville and Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Russell Wilson trying to start his career with 10 consecutive wins at home, joining Doug Flutie there at that number, but Flutie did it over the course of 10 years with two different teams. First and 10 after going three and out, both teams three and out in their opening possessions. That's caught by Golden Tate with some running room and a first down. Out near midfield. Brought down finally by Josh Evans, who's checked in for Dwight Lowry, who has been taken to the locker room with a head injury. His return is questionable. That was good for 20 yards. Well, you'll watch as Tate comes out. The, the tight end and the inside receiver both released to block. It's a very quick screen. It catches Puzlozny up inside and actually... That's Kellen Davis who gets the block on both linebackers coming from outside to in. Up the sideline. Incomplete. Wilson trying to hit Golden Tate. Well covered by the rookie McCray. And he has been solid since week 10 last season. And that's really when Seattle began to really push to be the kind of team that people expect playoff runs from. Last year, midseason, they really turned it on. The division looked like it was the 49ers to take, but Seattle kept winning games at the end of last season, really got into the mix, and now have carried it over into this season. Second and ten after the incomplete pass. Lynch right side, big hole for Marshawn Lynch. Down inside the 25-yard line. 27 yards, Mike Harris finally brought him down. Well, this was a problem last week for Jacksonville. They, they're having trouble in the run fit. Watch as the linebackers step up, and the zone blocking on the backside is key as the offensive lineman won't let the backside of the defensive front crash down on Lynch. He squeaks through the hole on the front side. And, of course, we all know Marshawn Lynch is never one to shy away from contact in the secondary. He gets every yard coming to him no matter what it takes. Play action. All along a great fake. And that was Luke Wilson, the rookie tight end out of Rice. Well, this is the kind of start that Seattle wanted to get off to. It's a great run fake. After you hit him hard with Marshawn Lynch, watch the defense jump at Marshawn Lynch. Jason Babin has no clue Russell Wilson's going to keep that football. That leaves Wilson coming right alone all by himself, wide open, the easy catch. 
for the tight end who turns it up for a good game. 15 yards on the play, and it'll be first and goal from inside the 10 at the 9. Lynch back inside. Fights his way down to around the five-yard line. You get an idea of how, what a steamroller this Seahawks team is, both defensively and offensively. That big group up front, even though Okung is out of there. Russell Okung, their great left tackle, who is on injured reserve, eligible to return. You know, they just plug in the next guy, the next guy in, and away they go. And they just didn't. McQuiston is just as good as Okung in the run game. Second and goal, right side. And they're going to mark him just short of the end zone. Well, it looked like he got in from up here in the booth, and the crowd doesn't like it. But there's so much traffic down there, there's no telling where he went down just short or just across. It looks like he was in from up here. We'll get a look at it. Lynch has got to get in before his knee touches down. And boy, hard to see. And if his elbow or wrist touches... Well, it might. his elbow was down in the end zone, but the ball has to be across the line as well. They may take a look at this. Pete Carroll has thrown the red flag, and he wants another look at it. Bill Vinovich, our referee Seattle today. Seattle is challenging the ruling of the field. Another runner is short of the goal line. Timeout. So they'll take a look upstairs. 8.09 left to go in the first. The Seahawks are threatening. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The redesigned Honda Odyssey. Honda, start something special. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And we're back at CenturyLink Field. Waiting the challenge. Let's take another look. Steve Tasker. Well, this is Lynch. Now watch his left knee as he goes in. This is going to turn out worse for Pete Carroll than we thought. After there, his the knee's field, down. The ruling on the field stands. It'll be second down on the right edge. Well, we thought we thought it might have been worse, that they might spot him even shorter of the goal line than they did to begin with because his knee was down well short of where we thought it was actually even a possibility that it was down. But they gave him the exact spot that he got on the first call, and it'll be just short of the goal line. As you see there, that's... Now they're going to look at the spot again. Yep. And there it is. So third and goal. Jumbo package, play action, touchdown. Zach Miller was all alone. And when you can run the ball like that, the play action works. After having a power pack, very physical drive, coming down to set up the score, they beat the Jaguars with a finesse play, a quick play action. And the tight end just sneaks out the backside. Zach Miller with the easy, see him go down for like a cut block on Alu Alu and just misses it purposely and gets up and catches it. House go with the extra point. 8.04 left to go in the first and the Seahawks draw first blood. An impressive drive. From Seattle, Miller with the touchdown. The NFL and all 32 teams are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Visit NFL.com slash Hispanic Heritage to hear the personal stories 
of Hispanic players in the NFL. Today's game is available in Spanish on SAP as Jose Antonio Melian has the call. And earlier today, Luis Navarro was honored as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. He is an advisor for One League for Everyone, a program committed to fully supporting low-income recreational soccer players in the Lake Washington Youth Soccer Association. Oscar ready to boot it away. He gave him the pump fake. <laughs> don't see that often. I don't know why that happened. Uh, no. No, nope, uh, not going to do it. Don't, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> and I, pump, I do not know why he did not make, perhaps the, the lead official did not give him the ready for play signal and he didn't realize it i have no idea why house did, did not kick that ball denard robinson is back deep five yards deep in the end zone and the quarterback from michigan and he'll bring it out Trying to get to the outside and brought down hard near the 24-yard line. And let's check in now for an update with the fellas in New York. Richardson, plenty of action coming, Coach. Yeah, he didn't bring him there just to carry the water bucket there, JB. His first carry, one-yard touchdown, and he starts fast, 7-0. All right, back to Bill McEntee and Steve Tasker. Thank you, man. Andrew Luck in against his old coach at Stanford, Jim Harbaugh, with the 49ers are trying to avoid a second straight loss after getting hammered here in Seattle last Sunday night. Henny, Maurice Jones through, incomplete, never hauled it in. And let's take another look, Steve, at the touchdown. Well, it's kind of an old play. It's a full play. He comes down to cut Alu Alu and then just sneaks out the backside. As everybody pursues the play, they just forget about him, and he's wide open. Sneaky play, and it works. Jacksonville wanted to come out today and use motion and bunch sets to try to free up their receivers because Seattle likes to play press coverage. They wanted to get off to a fast start, and that has not happened. Mojo stopped for a loss. Cam Chancellor, the big strong safety, made the tackle. Well, this is an, an offense that starts with that guy right there, Maurice Jones-Drew. There was a question as to whether he was going to play today. He's not 100% with a tendon strain in his ankle. He worked out about 10 a.m. He worked out about 10 a.m. this morning and gave him the go ahead. I mean, you can tell him. You can bet Gus Bradley was there watching very intently as to how well he would get through it. And at the end of it, they decided he was ready. Had to leave the game last week with a strained tendon in his left ankle. Third and long. Penny tried to hit Stephen Burton. Incomplete. And again, Jacksonville will have to punt. You know, Jacksonville has been struggling offensively. Some of it is because... You know, if it's a new regime, new coaching staff, and some of it is because they don't have all their weapons. Steve Burton playing because Justin Blackman has been suspended. Mercedes Lewis, the big tight end, is also out of the lineup. They are very thin at their skill positions with their frontline players. Second three and out for Jacksonville. A short punt. Tate will have some room. Brought down hard, just short of midfield. Again, good field position for Seattle, a 43-yard punt and a 14-yard return. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx. Request when and where your packages are delivered with FedEx Delivery Manager. And by Viagra. A rare meeting between these two teams, only the seventh time they played each other. Seattle holds a 4-2 series edge. The last time they met was here in Seattle back in week nine of 2009. The Seahawks won in a blowout, 41 to nothing. Ready to start again after an impressive scoring drive. They lead 7-0.
Wilson from the gun. Play action. Caught by Sidney Rice. Dropped immediately after a nice game. Will Blackman made the stop. Let's take a look at that last drive. Well, as it got started, it was Marshawn Lynch snapping off a big 20-yard run, and then another getting down close to the goal line, and then, of course, the fake play action to the corner of the end zone. Miller wide open. Seahawks made it look easy on their second possession after going three and out to open the game. Seven plays, 71 yards. Second and one after the pickup of nine. Lynch. Such a remarkable combination of balance and power. That was good for seven yards. He's one of the few running backs in the league. You'll see when he runs, it looks like he stomps his feet. I mean, the guy is so solid on the ground, which is why in the middle of that run, you saw him kind of plant his foot and just push the guy by. The last 14 games, he's averaged 109, almost 110 yards a game. That is a bunch of yards in a row for a guy who came over from the Buffalo Bills after being a former first-round pick. That was here at home. We have movement before the snap. Marshawn Lynch actually leads the NFL in rushing since week nine of 2011. Offense number 64. Five-yard penalty, still first down. With almost 2,700 yards, he has been the workhorse of this offense as they get J.R. Sweezy, the right guard. Well, and you think, too, back to the to the moments when things started to come together here in Seattle for Pete Carroll. That run that he made in the playoffs that set off the seismo seismograph here in Seattle was, was the stuff of legends. And this team really rallied, rallies around him. Robert Turbin has checked in at running back. Fake it to him. Wilson up top. Now that was well defended by Blackman. Brown wants a flag, but they won't get one. Golden Tate was the intended receiver, and Blackman had very good coverage. Yeah, that was excellent coverage by Blackman. The crowd may not like it, but he plays this as well as you can play it. Tate runs a thin post. Blackman comes up playing the ball. And I, you can't play it any better. Now, he put his hands on his back, but he didn't. And he, you saw a little handful of jersey. You're not going to get that call. And if anybody knows that, as Wilson takes a big, big shot from Sanderic Marks. Listen, Seattle Seahawks play as physical as anyone in the secondary. They're not going to get that call. Wilson, lots of time. That's caught again by Rice. About a yard short of the first down. And once again, let's check in with JB and Coach Cowher in New York for an update. San Fran knocks it up, Coach. Yeah, they respond back. Kendall Hunter's going to take this little tricky play, a little draw play. He's great to the outside, 13 yards, 7-7 seven, seven right now in San Fran. 4-13 left in the first. Back to Bill McAtee and Steve Tasker. JB, Coach, thank you very much. You pick up a 13, brings up third and two for the Seahawks. Easy backfield for Wilson. Under pressure and down he goes. Great penetration by Jacksonville, led by Jason Babbitt. Well, that was a three-man rush. You can't afford to let Russell Wilson take a shot in the mouth when Jacksonville really only rushes three guys. They got pushed right back into him. Jason Babbitt with a fantastic move right here at the bottom. He's in his racing stance. Just completely beats Giacomini off the edge. And Wilson has no chance. A three-man rush and he get a sack. That's something special for a defense. 57 career sacks for Babin claimed off waivers by Jacksonville after he was released late last season by Philadelphia. Blackman back deep. Hunter takes a Jacksonville bounce and finally downed out of bounds. 356 left to go in the first. Jaguars will take over first and ten. One total yard for Jacksonville on offense so far in six plays. Three negative rushes and two incomplete passes. As they start first and ten. From their own 17. High formation. And he stumbles. And a loss of a yard or two. Knee bane with good penetration. Well, and there good. you have it. I mean, there's no uh, there's no getting around it. It's been a rough year offensively for Jacksonville. Of course, they're You record. remember that? The 1933 Cincinnati Reds? Yes. All-time low? Yeah. 
3.3 looks like an ERA. You were just in high school. <laughs> Second and 12. And we're hearing from 67,000 here at Century Lake Field. Henny under pressure and sacked. Ran out of time. Now watch as Clinton McDonald's going to come right up the pipe. He bull rushes. Yeah, he bull rushes Will Rackley, the left guard, and just pushes him right back into Chad Henney's lap. McDonald in his fifth year, fifth year out of Memphis. So they move him back. Justin Forsett checks in on third and 21. Henny from his own end zone. Incomplete. Trying to hit the rookie Ace Sanders. Threw it behind him. And again, three and out for Jacksonville. Fourth and 21. And this is as bad as it's going to get for Jacksonville. Now you think about Gus Bradley coming in and trying to rebuild something. You're going to go through games like this and stretches of seasons like this. And it you just seem sometimes like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But you learn a lot of things about your team in situations like this. Anger. Tate. Spin move. Down to the 40 and again. Good field position for the Seattle Seahawks, a 42-yard punt and an 8-yard return. There's a little pushing and shoving at the end of that play. I don't think the officials are going to throw a flag at all. Yeah, they separated them and no harm, no foul. Tomorrow on CBS, it's finally here, the premiere of Hostages. And be sure to watch it Monday so you can talk about it on Tuesday. Hostages tomorrow at 10, 9 central, only CBS. Back here in Seattle, Seahawks coming off that huge win over San Francisco last Sunday night, trying to start 3-0 for the first time since 2006. And not a lot of good news for Jacksonville on offense in their three possessions. Negative 10 yards. Seattle starts in the Jacksonville 40. In the round, Tate. And out close to a first down. Russell Allen made the stop, a gain of nine. Golden Tate, the 60th overall pick in 2010. Drafted after an outstanding career at Notre Dame. Led the Seahawks in receptions through the final seven games last season, trying to continue to have that kind of impact here in 2013. Now, this is the guy that, you know, he told us, he goes, the offseason that this Seahawk team put together because Russell Wilson was, had the season he had last year, completely different than a year ago. Lynch follows Coleman in. Another nice pickup. Down inside the 25 to the 24. Again, Russell Allen. The outside linebacker made the stop after a gain of seven yards. Well, this is this is so well blocked right here at the point of attack. Watches the guard tackle clear out the way, moves up to the second level. You see him just bulldoze Puzlozny out to the side. Has an outstanding job by it, by Carpenter inside. Seven carries, 55 yards for beast mode. He's going to get a chance to add to that, but will lose a yard. Swarming Jacksonville defense. You got Sweezy and Giacomini on the right side of the Seahawk line. Did an outstanding job on that last play. And of course, and I, and I agree, Marshawn Lynch should really be tired at the end of this game they're going to get i would give him the ball 35 times against this jacksonville defense they have really struggled in their run fits now in that play just a moment ago for a one yard loss they attacked the line of scrimmage and did a nice job but this year they have struggled in being disciplined at the line of scrimmage in the point of attack lynch tries to muscle his way for an extra yard or two 
Nearing the end of the first quarter, Marshawn Lynch has rushed for 100 yards or more in 16 of his last 27 games. And off to a great start here in week three. As we've reached the end of the first quarter, 7-0 Seahawks. Pete Carroll liking what he's seen so far. Ready to begin the second quarter here in Seattle. A touchdown pass from Russell Wilson to Zach Miller. The only scoring in the first 15 minutes of play. But Seahawks threatening once again, facing third and ten. This is the Jacksonville 24-yard line. Wilson, again with plenty of time. And that is caught and out of bounds. Golden Tate. Good for 20 yards. Uh, well executed by Jacksonville. Great, or by Seattle. Great pass protection at the beginning. Russell Wilson, you can see, I mean, we met Russell Wilson. He's not a tall quarterback. Watch as he steps back. Has a great, has a great lane out to the deep sideline route so he can see Tate around the tall offensive lineman. They ball the pass rush up in the middle and he sends it flying to the sideline. First and goal. Maybe a miscommunication, but a touchdown nevertheless. And again, Zach Miller. Well. Zach Miller ends up standing right at the pylon. He's going to come from inside and watch as Russell Wilson comes out. And he gives the pump fake spinorama, and they just forget all about Miller, and he's just standing there by himself. I don't know how you do that with a guy 6'5, 255 pounds, but they did it twice. <laughs> Extra point by Hauska is good. Seahawks extending their lead to start the second quarter. 14 0. Seattle trying to start. 3-0 for the first time since 2006. Zach Miller with his second touchdown reception of the game. Giving the Seahawks a 14-0 lead. Just ready to kick it away. Here early in the second. Bernard Robinson takes a knee. Well, the phrase beyond deafening has been used to describe the noise level here at Century Field, and that's pretty accurate. Last Sunday night, they set a new Guinness Book World Record for loudest stadium at 136.6 decibels, which broke the previous mark set at a soccer stadium in Turkey two years ago of 131.9. They can make it hard for visiting teams here in Seattle. First and ten for Jacksonville. Stephen Burton with the catch. Only a play for positive yardage, a pickup of five. You think about the 136.6 decibels, Bill, in Super League Field. There's the soccer game in Istanbul, Turkey. An ambulance is only 120, and a jackhammer is only 100. This place is unhealthy. <laughs> Second and five. No joke. No room. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Tony McDaniel. Well, of the 11 plays that Jacksonville offense has run, they have two plays that were five-yard completions, and the rest have been for negative yardage. Seattle with the toughest defense to score on a season ago, off to a terrific start. Again, this year, even without some of their key playmakers, came in leading the NFL in total defense. Also pass defense and points allowed, giving up just 10 points for the first two weeks. Penny. Nowhere to go. Yeah, that's the scary part about this Seattle defense, Bill, as they get in on Henny again. They're getting healthier. 
the Seahawks are actually getting healthier. Watch this side of the defense as these guys come off the edge and underneath to get in on Henny. See there once again, that's McDonald pushing the pocket back in, Meebane as well, and they just collapse the pocket and give Henny nowhere to scramble to. Pressure as well to Michael Bennett. And the flag before the snap. Ball start. Offense number 30. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Call it on Jordan Todman. Yeah, and it's a tangible. You can quantify how many times this crowd has been a factor in games because of the false start penalties. And the things you can't know is all the miscommunications that cause other mistakes. He wants to come away from this exchange again with great field position. Good high punt. Tate. Another nifty return into Jacksonville territory down close to the 45. Once again, Jacksonville will start on will be forced to start defensively in their own end of the field as Seahawks take it over on the Jacksonville 46. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. And by Rush from director Ron Howard in theaters September 27th. New Jacksonville head coach Gus Bradley trying to beat the juggernaut that he helped build here in Seattle after serving as the Seahawks defensive coordinator from 2009 to 2012. Seattle starts from the Jacksonville 47, first and 10. They lead 14-0. Short drop up the sideline, and that is caught by Jermaine Purse. Free agent, second year out of Washington, who grew up in Lakewood, Washington. A pickup of 17 yards, and he hobbles to the sideline. He got tackled out of bounds hard by McCray on the sidelines, and we'll keep an eye on him. Here's got a 43-yard touchdown pass in the opener against Carolina. Lynch, the long setback, stays in the block. Again up top. And we get a flag. Demetrius McRae had the coverage on Stephen Williams. And they're going to call him for pass interference. Watch as they come down. He's got a man on man. I don't know what. Pass interference. Defense number 35. Spot foul. Automatic first down. The one, they, the one they didn't call at the other end was worse than this one. It, no question, he did not play the football, but there wasn't much contact. He was between the player and the football, no question about it. And the official must have thought there was more contact than there was. McCray is not the reason the receiver fell down. So, first and goal, the Seahawks threatening again, 155 yards. Total offense for Seattle, minus seven to this point for Jacksonville. Lynch, right side. Jacksonville swarming on defense at the point of attack, led by Paul Puzlesny, the middle linebacker. Seahawks have not lost here at CenturyLink Field since December 24th. 2011 when they were beaten by the 49ers 1917 Jacksonville meanwhile has not won a game on the road since last September a year ago second and goal after the loss Lynch fights his way just shy of the goal line once again, Marshawn Lynch getting down close. He's so good at running in traffic, and he even runs hard, as you'll see here at the end of this. Grant gets his foot grab, and he just continues to try and pull guys in, and that is as close as a touchdown as the other one was. Just short of the goal line. 
It brings up a third and goal once again for the Seahawks. High formation. Coleman, the fullback. Lynch. Again, great penetration from this Jacksonville defense that has continued to play hard. They have been saddled with very difficult field position. And Gino Hayes and Krasinski, the safety team to get this, watches the defensive line, soaks up the offensive line blocks, and leaves Hayes free to come in and really label Lynch right in the hole. And Krasinski comes in and cleans up. Well played up front by the Jacksonville defensive line, allowing the linebacker and safety to come in untouched for the tackle. So we'll see Hauska. Been perfect so far this year, 4-4. Four four. There's some 21 yards out. Got it. So they don't find the end zone, but the Seahawks extend their lead. 17-0, 9-40. Left to go in the half. And we're back. Seahawks with a 17-0 lead over the 0-2 Jacksonville Jaguars. 9-40. Left to go in the second. Line drive kick by Hauska. Field goal. A couple of hops in the end zone. They'll take it out to the 20. Jacksonville played in Oakland last Sunday and stayed out west for the week. Jaguars practice at San Jose State all week before coming to Seattle yesterday. You know, he, he said that, you know, he didn't really put much stock in the fact that these guys might bond a little bit by being away from their families and the cares and woes of everyday life, being completely focused on practice and each other. But he said it did happen that way. He was very impressed and very happy with the way the team bonded together and hung out, watched film together. And he thinks it was a very good idea to stay out west before this game. No answer so far for this tough Seattle defense, although that was a nice pickup on first down. Stephen Burton with the catch and driven back hard. Bobby Wagner, little linebacker with the stop. Wagner coming off a great rookie season, finished second in the voting for Defensive Rookie of the Year, had 140 solo, solo tackles in 2012. Forward progress netted a gain of six yards. And Steve Burton did a nice job. He was supposed to run to the sideline, saw the defense pursuing out there, stopped in the dead area in the zone, and Henny found him at the heads up play by Burton. Mojo trying to cut it back. Dives across the 30, and that is the first time the Jaguars have been beyond their own 30 yard line. Once again, let's check in with the guys up in New York. Coach and JB. Coach. Look at this Geno Smith pass. Watch him in the face of this blitz. He's about to get hit. Steps up, finds Stephen Hill right on the money. 51 yards, and the New York Jets go up 14 sets. Back to Bill McAtee, and the guy who should be a Hall of Famer, Steve Haskell. Chad Henney throwing it in the, in the turf. Nowhere to go, and uh, looking at that update, good matchup, Steve, between two rookie quarterbacks, E.J. Manuel and Geno Smith. Yeah, both those clubs seem to think they've found their guy. Only time will tell. Jacksonville, on the other hand, waiting for Blaine Gabbert, their guy, to get back healthy. 15 stitches in his hand on week one has opened the door for Chad Henney, and believe me, Chad Henney knows the kind of opportunity this is for him. Second down, up the middle. And a nice pickup close to the 40-yard line. Mike Morgan made the stop after a gain of nine by Maurice Jones-Drew. You, you think about this Jacksonville offense, and, and Gus Bradley told us, he, he and his whole focus and his mantra for his club in this rebuilding time, as you see Blaine Gabbert there, is just, in just focus on getting better every game, every practice, every day. The results will show for themselves as we improve. But if you improve, there's no question that the result we want will come sooner or later. Jacksonville putting together a couple of positive plays on offense. Third and one. Henny. And he's got the first down. Yeah, that was a design play. Chad Henney, they're, they're not going to run too much of this quarterback option, read option with Henney in the game. Now, Blab Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert can run a 4-5-40. He's got the wheels to make something like this into a bigger play, and they'll put more of those in when he's the quarterback. 
But with Henny in there, they pick and choose very carefully where they'll use their read option with that quarterback run. Red Bryant took the fake for just an instant, but that was enough. Maurice Jones Drew fights for one. Quarterback, uh, one of the questions for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Steve, and a look at both Blaine Gabbert now, and Chad Henney. Gabbert didn't finish week one game. Henney took over for him. But in the games they started, week one for Gabbert, week two for Henney. This is, these are the numbers. This is the number that concerns a lot of people, and for good reason. You've got to complete even higher than 65% if you want to be successful. But Chad Henney is just a little more accurate, and plus his arm is a little bit more so that they can force the issue down the field more with the offense when Henny's in the game. But Gabbert gives him the ability to run from the quarterback position. And Jacksonville will take a timeout, second and nine, when we return. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bose, the official home audio sponsor of the NFL. And by oneand1.com. Pre-reserved now from over 700 new domains with oneand1.com. Little grilled octopus for lunch. Just what the doctor ordered. Pike Place Market here in Seattle. Famous landmark. Second and nine for Jacksonville. Believe it or not, this is their most impressive offensive drive of the game so far. The first four drives, minus seven yards. And this drive, six plays for 25 yards. Jones Drew. Little bit of running room. Walked out at the 47. Mojo, the three-time Pro Bowler. Just the final ten games of last season with the foot injury. Had to leave the game last week with a strained tendon in his left ankle. You saw there a moment ago, Jed Fish calling in the play to Chad Henney. It's a little easier to do today because they're huddling up, not going no huddle. Usually, Jed Fish has got to start talking on the radio as soon as they turn it on when the play clock is set. He gets on there as fast as he can. Not that issue today. There are other issues to deal with with the crowd boys. Justin Forsett checked in. In and out of the hands of Stephen Burton, and that's what he should have had. That would have been good for a first down or at least some running room on the play. But instead, they'll have to punt once again. You know, one thing Jacksonville has done with the formations, they bunch guys at the top. They're stacking receivers on the line of scrimmage of Jacksonville to keep the big physical defensive backs of the Seahawks guessing. They can't be as physical with the receivers when they're stacked and in bunch formations, and it gives them an opportunity to get down the field a little better. You saw there, Burton had no issues getting up the field, just couldn't pull it in. Anger with a good high punt. Golden Tate with the fair catch at about the 13-yard line. 39-yard punt, no return, and coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, join JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights from Week 3. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. And Russell Wilson ready to go back to work. 75th player, 75th player taken in the NFL Draft last year. Threw more passes out of the pocket last season at 25%, Steve, than any other quarterback in the league. They like getting him to the outside. One of the things that's been jumping around Seattle this week is the fact that Russell Wilson was taking the draft after the punter for Jacksonville. Complete. Luke Wilson. And a late flag. Wilson with the first down. Fifth round pick, the rookie out of Rice. Check the penalty. Illegal block in the back. Or... This is going to go against the Seahawks. At least that's what the Jacksonville Jaguars are thinking. After the catch, during the run, illegal block in the back, offense number 81. Ten-yard penalty, to be first down. So that will negate a 12-yard gain. They call it a Golden Tate. Right here, you can see him pushing McCray. He's got his pushes his head right down in.
to the bottom of the line, and I don't know how you can say that's not a block in the back. It is. Not a very good one. <laughs> but they the take it. So first down, they toss it back to Marshawn Lynch trying to get to the edge. Finds a little bit of running room up the sideline. Out to around the 22-yard line. Jacksonville playing better and better on defense. Well, they're getting better run fits, and they're spilling this play to the outside. Now, it was a designed wide run, no question about it, but Jacksonville took excellent angles and pushed Marshawn Lynch all the way to the corner. Still turned out to be a six-yard gain, but nevertheless, they had their guys at the right angle, they, and the Seahawks won the battle at the edge of the defense, which allowed Lynch to get there, but the Seahawks, the Jacksonville, did an excellent job stringing it out and forcing him to the sideline. Robert Turbin is in for Marshawn Lynch. Left side. And he's got a first down. Jason Babbitt finally made the stop. Well, Pastor, the left guard, gets out and around. And they almost got it blown up by Miller in the backfield. There's a nice job by the offensive line, I think, of... Seattle, as they get all the way into the secondary, you see there. McQuiston getting up there. It was well blocked up front. Turbin stays in the game. Gets it again. Trying to find his way back to the line of scrimmage and pushed out of bounds. Again, good penetration from Jacksonville. Pushed out of bounds by Will Blackman. Turbin in his second year out of Utah State. Fourth round pick. A year ago came in averaging more than five yards a carry through the first two games. There's Blackman, spent time in here in Seattle, signed by Jacksonville on August 28th. He had an interception the next day in the final preseason game. Knows the Seattle personnel well because he was in camp against them. Second and 13, Wilson. Finally checks it down to Turbin, he's dropped immediately, and incomplete. Yeah, and that was probably a good idea for Turbin to drop that. He was going to be tackled for a loss. At least they get the yardage back to the line of scrimmage if he drops it, because you're right, he was going to get tackled before he could even come down with this. Again, that's McCray coming up from the secondary. Got the start today at right corner, did Demetrius McCray. Gus Bradley told us that he likes McCray. Feels like the game is not too big for him and wants to see what he can do. Physical corner, seventh round pick out of Appalachian State. They run the slant to Golden Tate. And he's got another Seattle first down, dragging tacklers across the 40 to around the 42. Well, you know, sooner or later, Seattle is going to start working. When you trade, Dwayne Grotz is out of this game with an injury, a rookie cornerback and Demetrius McRae comes in he's also a rookie right here comes underneath on the flat crossing route turns it up and just finds the gap McRae ends up almost ripping it loose but when you trade one rookie for another you're not you're not necessarily going to get better play and the defense is really still one of those defenses where you got to watch what you're doing in the secondary Wilson the flag down the ball is loose and Jacksonville has it. Brandon Dederick fell on the football, but let's check the penalty. This is going to depend on who this flag is against. It might be holding against Seattle, and that still goes... Holding. Offense number 77. Penalties decline. Jacksonville ball. First down. Jonathan Cyprian, the rookie strong safety, stripped it away. Carpenter is working right here. This is where the hold is. Working against Diedrich, and he just hangs on to him. Diedrich actually ends up recovering the fumble, as you saw there, but that is an enormous turnover for Jacksonville in a play, a defensive play and a defensive series that really was going pretty well for Jacksonville, except for the long Golden Tate first down. They were playing very well there. Denard Robinson is the deep back. He gets the toss. Trying to get to the edge, and he'll lose a couple of yards. K.J. Wright made the stop. Another look at the fumble. It's a great job by Cyprian. We spoke to him yesterday, and 
he is, and you talk about these two defenses, we talked a lot about them, how they're the same philosophy, and Gus Bradley told us that that guy, Cyprian, is the Cam Chancellor of the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars. Cam Chancellor, Chancellor, of course, the big safety for the Seahawks. They come out of the Wildcat with Denard Robinson ready to take the snap as we have reached the two-minute warning here in Seattle. On their feet here in Seattle, Jacksonville getting ready to run just their second play in Seahawk territory. Robinson in the backfield with Henny, second and 12. With time to the sideline, that is caught by Burton. Claimed off waivers from Minnesota on September 1st, played in 15 games for the Vikings the last two seasons. Gus Bradley likes him as well, calls him the beast. Wants to see what he can do as the sun comes out here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, Burton weighs 224 pounds. He's physically able to hold up against these big corners in Seattle. After the pickup of 13, Henny on the move. Guns it to the sideline. That is caught. Saying that he stepped out of bounds and came back in. That was Cecil Shorts on the reception. They're talking about it. And yeah, they're going to... I don't see a flag, and it's a penalty if Shorts went out of bounds and came back in. He is not allowed to catch the football. You see it there. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The receiver stepped out of bounds and did not reestablish with both feet. Second down. Well, you see there, he hasn't been out of bounds in this. Now that step right there, the right foot, maybe. There's no way of telling. That is awfully close. This is going to be an official review inside of two he, minutes. Now, Gus Bradley can't ask for them to review, and neither would Pete Carroll because it went his way. This is, comes from upstairs because we are inside the two-minute mark of the first half. And they are going to send him over to the replay booth. And we'll take another look. Unless that right foot went out, we can't see. Look where it ends up. About a foot inbounds so from that angle it didn't look like he stepped out of bounds yes yes hard to see thurman was coming across and kind of got in the way of the camera and, and there has to be conclusive evidence for them to reverse it because the call on the field was incomplete now there's no question he caught the ball the question is obviously had he stepped out of bounds before he did that Different angle. And there he never appears to be out of bounds. See some shorts who really. But we broke. get there late a little bit. See some shorts really broke through last season for Jacksonville. 55 catches for almost 1,000 yards. Came in with 11 receptions for 133 yards through the first two games. We spoke to Chad Henney yesterday about that and he acknowledged that yeah it was yeah he looked he looked for shorts as that season wore on because he, he began to prove his worth and the receivers echoed to us that they is that foot in or out of bounds his right after foot. reviewing the play the ruling on the field stands incomplete pass take it down yeah not conclusive from any of those angles They'll erase the gain. It'll be second and ten. And Chad Henney, you know, in the game that he started after Blaine Gabbert was out of the lineup, a lot of, and a lot of aspects of their offense took off, one being Cecil Shorts and his production as a wide receiver. Jacksonville trying to take advantage of the turnover. First time they put together any threat on offense. Bunch set to the right. Henny 
looking that way. Under pressure, that hit as he released the football incomplete. Stephen Burton was in the vicinity. That'll bring up third down. Well, the pre-snap motion gives his receivers a chance to get down the field, but as you see there, Henny, just as he starts to release this, gets hit in the back by Clemens. Clemens in the lineup for the first time since recovering from knee surgery, back in the lineup today, and this Seahawk team gets better and better as they get guys healthy and healthier and inserted in the lineup. Clemens, really a guy that was productive for them a year ago, has been out, and now he's back in, and the Seahawks get better. Clemens has been their sack leader for the last three seasons, and Jacksonville will take another timeout. 122 left to go in the half. Sunshine in Seattle coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Join JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Third down for Jacksonville. Justin Forsett is in the game. In the backfield with Henny. Who operates from the gun. They rush three, delayed blitz. They hit the slant, the shorts. And he's got another Jacksonville first down. All the way down to the 17-yard line. Well, Jacksonville puts shorts up by himself to the left of the formation and puts three guys at the bottom in a bunch formation. And he's getting one-on-one -on -one coverage with a lot of space. And Henny fits it in. Jags with one timeout remaining. Up quickly to the end zone. Shorts was the intended receiver. Both Richard Sherman and Cecil Shorts had a chance to catch that ball. Yeah, this is man coverage. Seahawks run man coverage more than anybody in the league, and Sherman couldn't get his hands up quick enough, and Shorts as a receiver, you just know Sherman's going to tip it, and it takes your concentration off, and you can't catch it. You think it's going to get tipped, and it doesn't. And the reaction time is just too quick to make the catch. 52 seconds remaining in the half, and they're bringing the noise here in Seattle. Second and ten. Penny tipped. Still in the air. And intercepted. And they get it right back. That's Bobby Wagner, the middle linebacker. Seattle came in, leading the league with seven turnovers. They had five last week against the 49ers. Well, this bounced right off the head of Brad Meester, the center, and it bounced up again right there as Wagner tips it really to himself and lays out for the athletic interception. I think Henny threw this off the tip of the helmet of Brad Meester, his center. And it went straight up in the air. Mojo was trying to get it, but he is not going to win a lot of jump balls. First and ten. Wilson lost it. Caught at midfield again by Golden Tate. Demetrius McRae had the coverage. Golden Tate just went up and got it. Yeah, it was a jump ball, no question. Russell Wilson, you got a lot of trust in your guy, particularly when he's working against a rookie. Throw it up and let him make a play. And the Jacksonville defenders are not turning around and looking at the football. Another completion to Tate. Worked down inside the 45, down close to the 44 by McCray. Clock stops, 29 seconds left to go in the half. Seattle and Pete Carroll take a timeout just outside of field goal range. Jaguars have scored just one touchdown this season. That was uh, late last week. Chad Henney connecting with Clay Harbor for 13 yards out against the Raiders. Seahawks have allowed just one touchdown this season. Cam Newton to Steve Smith, a three-yard scoring strike toward the end of the first half in week one. Hauska getting ready just in case he's called upon. Seahawks with 29 seconds to work with one timeout left. Three, nine, 
Wilson. Sidney Rice. And Wilson hit it in stride. A pickup of 23 yards. Well, now you're thinking with 23 seconds left and you get the first down out of bounds. The clock stops. You're just out. You're in field goal range. You don't want to take a negative play. But you even have time to work the middle of the field with an incompletion. If you can get a first down, you can spike the ball. Even if you don't get a first down, you can spike the ball on second down and then huddle up once again. No question, everything's still open for the Seahawks here, but they are running out of time, and they have to be mindful that they may have to stop the clock. They've taken just 21 seconds off the clock to get it down to the 21. Wilson escapes, and lots of running room. And finally driven out of bounds at the 10. Blackman made the stop, but that was a great example of the athleticism of Russell Wilson. Well, we said earlier in the half, he's so smart with the football. When he comes and breaks contain, as he gets some pressure, he comes out, he keeps his eyes down the field, but once he gets to the point of no return, he runs to the sidelines to stop the clock, and he's just so difficult to get a hard hit on as a quarterback. And when you're chasing him behind the line of scrimmage, he always throws the football away or finds an open receiver. He's so smart with the ball. 14 seconds remaining, they spotted at the 11 yard line. Wilson, and zone touchdown, Sidney Rice. And just when it looked like Jacksonville was gonna get on the board, Seattle turns it around, they get the turnover, march it down the field, and extend their lead. Well, Gus Bradley told us we can we can hang with these guys if we don't make mistakes. And the batted pass for the interception, interception, it doesn't take long at all for that to come back and turn into a touchdown going the other way. Great clock management by Seattle. Great heads up play by Richard Wilson. Husker makes it 24 0. Seahawks. Well, you get on this last two-minute drive, and you hit Sidney Rice for the deep cross, gets out of bounds inside the 25. Russell Wilson scrambles for 11 yards, and here's the play. Coming from the inside receiver at the bottom of your screen, takes the outside release, goes around the linebacker, breaks right in behind him. Russell Wilson steps up in the pocket and puts all the mustard he can on this, even stares down the receiver still gets it in there third touchdown pass of the day for Russell Wilson who's 13 of 17 for 179 yards and they went 79 yards and used just 34 seconds off the clock and that is an efficient drive and the Seahawks last series gave it up with the forced sack fumble on Russell Wilson they get it right back with a batted interception and Russell Wilson makes up for the fumble he just had by throwing the touchdown pass and leading his team on a last minute touchdown drive 79 yards and five plays and it took just 34 seconds off the clock Wilson on that drive was four of four for 69 yards and he ran for the other 10 yards so responsible for all 79 yards and that is booted out of the end zone well, fantasy football fans there's still time to get in and play with the best this season New games are available to join today. Sign up now at cbsports.com slash football. Pete Carroll has built some team here. Seahawks with a lot of very good young players. And what you notice is the in infectious sort of positive attitude of Pete Carroll. Everyone here seems to be having a lot of fun except for the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. Mojo moves the pile. So that will be the end of the first half with the score of 24-0. Seattle, a little pushing and shoving after the whistle. Players heading to the locker room though and we'll be back with the Verizon halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. 24-0 Seahawks, you're watching the NFL.
on CBS. McAtee back with Steve Tasker and really Steve in many ways the game playing out as we thought it might well I think the key to it now is the fact that you got Jacksonville offense that's really ha struggling to move the football in a league where most teams score between 20 and 30 points a game they have yet to score more than once in a game and they've got to do that to keep up with this this offense of Seattle because this defense of Seattle is really the strength of their team all right let's take a look now at our direct TV ultimate picture cam Involving Russell Wilson, first of his uh, two touchdown passes. They're on the play action to Zach Miller and round to that 24 0 halftime lead. Jacksonville won the toss, they deferred to the second half. So they'll have it to begin the third quarter. And Robinson back deep once again. Yeah, in that first half, Jacksonville only with 20 yards total rushing and Seahawks with 104 yards rushing. Just, uh, is, the Seahawks are a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. The Seahawks are really unhappy if they're not, if they're not in the hunt right away and stay there throughout the season. Jacksonville just trying to get better week by week. 275 total yards on offense for Seattle, 52. For Jacksonville, that goes out of the back of the end zone. So they'll take it out to the 20, and that's where the Jaguars will start first and 10. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. There you see the passing yards and the running, rushing yards for Seattle. Turnovers are a push, and, you know, we saw one where it looked like Jacksonville was just starting to play better defensively and move the ball offensively. They got the batted pass into the air for the interception, and right away Seattle capitalized and put this game at a 24 to nothing advantage. Here's Jones Drew. Up the middle, lowers his shoulder. Has to power forward. Picks up three yards. Bring up second and about seven. You know, Jacksonville's going to come out here. Gus Bradley in it. You know, there's a lot of... A lot of affection for Gus Bradley. We, you spoke about the enthusiasm Pete Carroll brought to the Seahawks. Gus Bradley was on Pete Carroll's staff for a lot of years for a reason. He is that type of coach. These players play hard for these coaches. Now, Jacksonville's got some guys. They need some better players in certain positions, but both teams play hard for the guys that are calling the plays. Short in motion, short drop. Try to get it to him. And he steps out of bounds. Tried to turn it upfield, but pushed out at the 26-yard line and two old friends embracing prior to the start of the game and we spoke to Gus and said did you talk to Pete during the week and he said well Pete calls me or texts me every week except for this one they did not they did not talk until the moment you saw them where they hugged right there in the pregame those two guys are very close friends as a coaching staff you spend hours upon hours together and a lot of lifelong bonds are formed third and four Jacksonville trying to start this second half on a positive note. Penny out near the marker, and that time Cecil Schwartz was able to make the catch inbounds and steps out of bounds with a first down, a pickup of six. You talk about Gus Brown and what he has meant, and no question, even the players on their defensive side of the ball in particular really look to this guy as a key as to their improvement. They started out tied for 25th and overall defense and points allowed per game and then they got all the way to number one last year this is a defense that owes a lot to him Jacksonville in the wildcat Robinson with the direct snap and that just goes nowhere and the ball is loose scramble for it This ball came out right away as Denard Robinson was going to make the decision. The decision was made for him. The ball rocketed forward, and Seattle jumped on it. That ball laid in the middle of the formation painfully. It seemed like forever. Watch as this ball just goes right off A. Sanders, jets forward five yards, and then just lays there in the sunshine by itself. <laughs> finally. Brandon Meebane finally fell on it 
We used to say, when I was playing, they said, listen, that ball doesn't stay alone for very long because it's nothing but a bunch of paychecks laying there. Somebody's going to grab it quick, and it took forever for Mebane to finally work his way loose because a lot of players didn't know that ball was loose. Usually, everybody's screaming. and that play, nobody said anything, and nobody knew the ball was loose. Ninth turnover of the season for Seattle. Wilson keeps it. Lead option and steps out of bounds. At around the 29. Gain of four. In that quarterback read option, a nondescript small play like that, very innocuous. It's a five yard gain. That is a great play for first down. You see there, he wanted to get better. Last week, he was 50% completion, 9 for 18. This, this week, 13 for 17, and that's where it all begins. He was very honest about that when we spoke with him. He said, I missed some throws last week. And even though they dominated the 49ers, you didn't feel like the offense was hitting on all cylinders. Marshawn Lynch. Good for maybe a yard. Pushed back by Will Blackman. Yeah, well, when your offense gets off to a slow start, as, as the Seahawks are telling themselves they did, I mean, they went to, you know, they went to Carolina. And opening weekend, there's a lot of things you don't know about. A lot of players on your team, even a veteran team like the Seahawks, you can kind of understand going west to east, struggling a little bit. And then to play the 49ers, that's a team that a lot of teams are going to struggle with offensively, believe me. Lots of movement before the snap. Let's see if it was offsides or if he was drawn off. Offside. Defense number 58. Unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Jason Babbitt trying to anticipate the snap count. He's got in that kind of that track stance where you come out of the, the sound of the gun and he got off, head down, everything. And those guys focus on the ball. He thought he had a read on the center and the cadence, and they just fooled him. Jason Babbitt, one of those players who was uh, sort of happy to be out west and practicing in San Jose State. As Jacksonville did not go back to Florida because uh, Jason has a two-month-old <laughs> child at home. He's up finally getting some sleep. Play action. Wilson, lots of time, lost it, and it's caught. Sidney Rice goes up and snatches it out of the air for a touchdown, 23 yards. Well, the play action starts, and Russell Wilson, as we said, when he moves with the football, you can see his eyes are always down the field. He put that ball out. As you see Rice coming in, working against McCray, and then it's Evans waiting for him at the top, and then it's all ball skills as Rice steps right in front and just plucks it away from both defenders. And a play where perhaps they were missing the veteran Dwight Lowry, who left the field in the first half with a head injury. Extra point is good, 11.41 left to go in the third, and the Seahawks piling it on now. Three plays, 33 yards after the turnover, and Russell Wilson has equaled his career high with his fourth touchdown pass today. Well, you see a second-year quarterback who has taken his team to the playoffs already working against a secondary that is forced because of an injury today to be, have three rookies working back in the secondary. Josh Evans, the rookie out of Florida. Demetrius McCray, the rookie out of Appalachian State. And of Jonathan Ziprian, the rookie out of Florida International. All three of those guys being forced into playing the entire game in the secondary. And Russell Wilson exploiting their inexperience. Robinson feels it at the end of the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20 and another look at the touchdown. Well, McCray and Evans end up being high-low on Rice. Evans watches Russell Wilson, doesn't get enough depth as he finally tries to drop back, and then Rice just steps right in front of him to play the football. Evans can't gather himself up to make a play on the football, and it turns into a touchdown. Inexperience has cost Jacksonville, particularly after the turnovers in their offense. 
play action. Penny out to the sideline. That was caught. To fall out the fullback. Out near the first down marker. And this is the time down 31 to nothing early in the third quarter where Jacksonville and Gus Bradley has just got to stay consistent. Run your offense, put one good play in front of another, and let the day develop. Gain of just six after the spot. Mojo, and he'll be about a yard or so, sh so shy of the first down of Brian Schofield made the tackle. Gus Bradley told us week one, he says, I, he's an enthusiastic guy, his players love him, but he goes, I don't know what's going to happen when we get to the point where we are 0-3 or 0-2 and we're down deep in another game, how these players are going to respond. Thus far, Jacksonville continues to play hard. Mojo, first down. He fights his way out close to the 35, a gain of six. K.J. Wright made the stop. Jacksonville with a lot of new faces on the roster as you might expect they claim seven players off waivers After the final cuts in the preseason had been made and they started practice in week one With ten players on the roster who had joined the team that week Seattle is on the other side of the spectrum. They have 11 players for their preseason roster now with other teams First and ten for Jacksonville Henny Gets rid of it underneath to Maurice John True. Brought down at the 42. Once again, let's check in with JB and Coach Cower in New York for an update. And it's Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, down 20 to 13 right here. Ryan Tannehill finds Brian Hartline right there on third down. Big 18-yard touchdown reception, and they tied up 20 to 20. 13-20 left in regulation. Back to Bill and Steve. JB, thank you. Unbeaten Miami trying to keep it going at home against Atlanta. Penny, and that is caught. Burton with a nice game into Seattle territory. Earl Thomas, the Pro Bowl free safety, made the stop. Gain of 14 yards and a lost shoe. You brought up a good point a moment ago. Seattle Seahawks are so deep in their roster that a lot of players they're forced to release are very good football players, and other teams snatch them up quick and really get good contributions from them for their regular 53-man roster. Tipped again and complete. So many times when you get a team that's perennially good or good from year to year like the Seahawks appear to be, particularly defensively, you get guys that are with them in the offseason uh, and make their way all the way through training camp that show up really well in preseason games. Other teams are just waiting because they know the numbers are working in their favor. Cliff Averill got a hand on it, one of the big free agent signings in the offseason by Seattle. He had 20 and a half sacks the last two years in Detroit. Jordan Todman is alone in the backfield. And they give it to him. Todman fights for a yard or two. Todman, who led the AFC in rushing in the preseason, Signed by Jacksonville late last year. Spent some time on the Minnesota Vikings practice squad. We suspected we would see Todman today. And also, as you see here, Justin Forsett will come into the game as well. With Maurice Jones-Drew not being 100%, you would think they would give him a, a few more series to sit down on the bench and rest, keep him fresh throughout the game and let these other young guys get some repetitions in. Forsett played four seasons here in Seattle. Penny up the sideline. Fight for it, and Cecil Shorts incomplete. Brandon Browner had the coverage. This is a back shoulder throw as Shorts tries to push him past Browner, one of those big physical corners of Seattle. A couple of years ago, he led the league and penalties and pass interference penalties down the field because he's so physical and Gus Bradley the head coach of the Jacksonville when he was here said was the guy who encouraged him just keep doing it they'll get tired of calling it and it works for Seattle Browner returning this week so that Seahawks have their legion of boom reunited for the first time and that heads out and they'll 
bring it out to the 20 yard line. Check that, they'll spot it at the two. Russell Wilson ready to go back to work. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Domino's, order from domino's.com today and don't forget to track your order. And by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Nice afternoon here in Seattle. There's the great wheel. Just off of downtown. Long field for the Seahawks as they start at their own two-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground, left side. Marshawn Lynch. You know, we're up here in the booth and during the commercial. We're having the great debate as to whether Russell Wilson would stay in the game throughout this third quarter. Or at some point, Pete Carroll would say, wait a minute, I want this guy ready in December, not really in September in a 31 to nothing game. But I think when you, when Jacksonville puts Seattle on their own two-yard line, I think you give him one more series at least halfway through the third quarter. It's pretty early in the second half, no question. But you got a defense that's playing lights out, and I think Russell Wilson is too valuable to really risk much further than this. They go for the five. Marshawn Lynch. Dragging tacklers out to around the seven-yard line. The problem with the NFL is, and this is one of the reasons why a lot of teams have a problem is running the quarterback redraw stuff, the read option. Your roster is only 45 guys on game day. It's not like you can run an entirely new 11 guys out there and start playing offense. You really have to pick and choose who you're going to rest. Now, no question your quarterback is one of those guys, maybe a number one wide receiver and maybe a running back. But your offensive lineman, you only got two or three spare guys to throw it run in there. So you're really limited into running and platooning guys. Wilson from the gun. Eludes one man, fires it, and that's intercepted by Zlesny. And Jacksonville with a turnover. He's going to get pressure right off his right side. He avoids it. Then he's, he's not going to be able to run because of the guys in the middle. And he throws late over the middle trying to fit it into Golden Tate and ends up making the tackle. Jason Babbitt had the initial pressure. As Leslie's in the right place at the right time. And the second turnover for Jacksonville. They take over first and goal from the two. Henny from the gun. Rolling to his right. Throws it away. Cecil Shorts had stepped out of the back of the end zone. That'll bring up second and goal. Yeah, Shorts knew that he was out of the back and ineligible. He didn't even try and catch that ball standing on the white line back there. Henny, and this is one of the things you get with the drop back passer. Henny had an opportunity to put his foot in the ground and get down near the goal line and gain a yard or two on the two-yard line, almost get in. He decided to pull it up and throw it and try and fit it in. A player like Blaine Gabbert or a guy like Russell Wilson has a tendency to tuck away and maybe run it. Not so with Henny. He's a missed an, he missed an opportunity there. Jackson were looking for their second touchdown of the season. Mojo squirts into the end zone. Maurice Jones through with the Jacksonville touchdown. Taking advantage of the Prozlesny interception. And the Jaguars are on the board. It doesn't matter how lopsided a game is, turnovers can even it up in a hurry. Now this one turnover turned into seven points for Jacksonville, but they've still given up touchdowns because of turnovers already in this game. So they're trying to get back to even in the turnover and touchdown ratio. Second touchdown of the season for Jacksonville. Now Scobie ought to try the extra point. Perfect. 6.20 left to go on the third. 31 to 7. Seattle. Jaguars able to take advantage of the turnover. And they're on the board. 6.20 left to go in the third. Jacksonville finding the end zone for the first time today after the interception on the tip ball by Paul Pozlesny. Maurice Jones-Drew with the touchdown. 
Jeremy Lane thinks about it, but takes a knee and he'll bring that out to the 20. Russell Wilson back to work. 31 to 7, Seattle. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by iShares. Visit iShares.com to learn more. And by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Back in Seattle, download NFL Mobile and never be without football. Get coverage of every NFL game and exclusive premium content on your smartphone. Call Star Star NFL or go to NFL.com slash mobile. Wilson on the play action. Tries to get it to the outside and just out of the reach of Zach Miller. This was a well-designed play. With Russell Wilson bootlegging by himself out to the right side and... Miller coming out the left from the going from the right all the way back across so Russell Wilson designed play to throw it back across the field on a misdirection well designed play it came wide open but Russell Wilson just couldn't fit it in Sean Lynch fights his way back to the line of scrimmage Babbitt made the stop He's had a solid ball game today. Yeah, Tyson Aluwalu has really played well as, as well. He's the guy that moved down to the end, out from the tackle spot to the end spot on the defensive line for Jacksonville this year. Much more suited for that physically and has played extremely well as he comes off in Jacksonville, platooning their front four to get fresh guys in against this offensive line. Third and ten. Going glitch, and here they come. Wilson spin move throws on the run and incomplete. Well, we said it earlier. I mean, he's just so smart with the football. They had him dead to rights. Watch as Paul Puzlesny is going to come all the way around and get up in Russell Wilson's face. And Wilson's just too quick and agile. He gets out of contain, has plenty of time to set his shoulders and throw this football up the field. Now this is an incompletion, but much better for the Seahawks, an incompletion than a 12-yard sack. Sean Ryan from his own 10-yard line, a high punt. Marker down. Blackman feels it. And then brought down at around the 33-yard line, but we'll check the penalty. 54-yard punt, 7-yard return. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 20. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. Jacksonville beats the ball, first down. I know. Oh, they call it on Mike Harris, so they push him back a bit. 31-7, Seattle, 5-18, left in the third. Raining when the day started, but plenty of blue in the skies above CenturyLink Field. 5.18 left to go in the third. Penalty that cost Jacksonville 17 yards of field position up the sideline for Schwartz. Incomplete. He was so well covered by Richard Sherman, NFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance Sunday night, locking down Anquan Bolden and coming up with that key interception in the fourth quarter to halt any hopes for a San Francisco comeback. And these cornerbacks for Seattle allow them to play the type of defense they want to play. They go man-to-man -man a lot, and it really forces teams to do some things they don't normally have to do. Jones Drew. Pushes the pile to the 19. An injury report, by the way, for Seattle. Red Bryant left the field with a back injury, and his return is questionable. This thing that the Jacksonville Jaguars are doing with this bunch formation, it forces the defensive backs to play back in the secondary. It gives their receivers a free release. Now, that's a running play, but they do that to, give, to keep the defense honest. They put these guys stacked right over here in a bunch so that the defensive backs have to back off back here so that they can get a free release and the physicality becomes less of an issue. Third and seven. Down goes Henning. Michael Bennett 
who along with Cliff Averill the big pickups for the Seahawks in the offseason Bennett coming in from Tampa where he had nine sacks last season well Brad Meester got run right around and that was a fantastic pass rush by Bennett Brad Meester had no shot he got no help from the guard he was a one-on-one -on -one and just got beat with speed from the inside fourth sack by the Seahawks Anger booms one from his own end zone. Tate makes the fair catch. And he was interfered with. That was Jordan Todman. He tried to pull off, but caught him as he uh, tried to move to his left. So this will be against Jacksonville. Forty-six yard punt. There's no foul for a fair catch interference. Number 20 for Seattle. Push the defender into him. Seattle keeps the ball. First down. All right, good explanation. So Travaris Jackson now will run the Seattle offense with 354 left to go in the third. And I think that's a prudent decision by Pete Carroll. The way your defense is playing, and the importance of this game, and the point you are in the season, it's not like Russell Wilson is not is going to get rusty by missing a quarter and a half of football in week three. I think mean, it's a smart move by Pete Carroll. Also get a chance to see this man, Kristen Michael, up for the first time this week, and the Seahawks excited to see what he can do. He had a great preseason. And Pete Carroll thinks he may be the most explosive player they have on the roster. Uh, the rookie out of Texas A&M, they took him in the second round, which is amazing because, you know, they got Marshawn Lynch, and to take a guy that high in the draft, you think, wow, they're going to give him the football a lot, or they're not happy with Marshawn Lynch, but that's what they think of this guy, and that's what he's shown thus far in early in the season. Tries to reverse direction, and that time, unable to do it. Kristen Michael split time at running back for most of his four seasons playing for the Aggies at Texas A&M, but he still managed to run for almost 2,800 yards and 34 touchdowns. And he is a guy who could score from anywhere on the field. And he's 5'10", 211 pounds. Yeah, Marshawn Lynch, 5'11", 215, so they're mirror images of each other. Jackson goes underneath to Kellen Davis. He's dropped at the 41 after a pickup of eight. Devars Jackson back here in Seattle where he started 14 games in 2011 before being traded to Buffalo. Third and four for the Seahawks. Jackson in the gun. Get underneath. And that's caught at the 35 for a first down. Luke Wilson, who grew up in Canada, in Ontario, before playing his college ball down in Texas, where he was a standout at Rice. That was good for six yards and a first down. Russell Wilson, they, uh, you look at him. He's got his helmet strapped on. It's not even unsnapped. He's walking around like, man, I can't believe I'm not out there. Jackson going deep. Oh, Papa. What a catch. Doug Baldwin. And the official waited to see if he had it, and he did. He one-handed it at the pylon. Wow. Not bad coverage by Blackman. And Baldwin makes that look incredibly easy. What a great athletic grab. He's working up at the top. Great release to the outside. And just pulls it in and slides through the end zone. 35 yards and it'll bring up first and goal i gotta say it we were laughing how how we would tell people how deep this roster is 
Pete Carroll needs a snorkel. His team is so deep. <laughs> been, Every place you've been saving you, that, haven't you? I've been saving. <laughs> this team has more good players deeper into their roster than any team I've witnessed this season. Baldwin it, is a great example of that two years ago as they review it. But Baldwin was the first undrafted rookie to lead his team in receiving in the NFL since 1960. What a great play. Played with a series of nagging injuries last season, but off to a great start here in 2013. He was Seattle's leading receiver coming in today with eight catches for 142 yards. And another look. And there's maybe a chance that they say he might have been down by contact before he actually reached the line, but I don't Now, is he, does Blackman touch him after he goes to the ground and before he gets to the end zone? He's got the ball there, and well, I don't think so. I think he touched him when he was going down before he caught it. And that, yeah, that play will stand. The play is confirmed. It was confirmed. He did not touch him before he got to the end zone, and that is a good call by the official on the spot, and it was confirmed by replay. Touchdown for Doug Baldwin to extend the Seattle lead. He's going to make it 38-7 with 128 left to go on the third. Officially reaching blowout status. Up at the top, watch the release as he fakes the inside move and forces Blackman to do the baseball turn away from the receiver he's covering and pick him up on the backside and that's just a well-thrown ball by Jackson. I think that kind of got lost in the catch. Tavares Jackson really put that ball on the money. Very nice, accurate, deep ball. Pete likes it. Listen, if you've got your backup quarterback in, that's all the breaks you're going to get in the NFL. Seattle is, you know, you can't let up on a team. You're up. 38 to 7 you think well they you know Gus J Gus Bradley over there they don't want to rub it in well they're not rubbing it in they're just letting their players play they pulled their starting quarterback and I mean, I, you're not going to get any breaks on their defense their defense is going to bring it and that's all the break you're going to get if you're Jacksonville you've got to continue to play and Gus Bradley knows that he's been across the field in this building this is the toughest venue for a road team to come in and win anywhere in the National Football League, and they're proving it today at the expense of Gus Bradley and the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Boris Jackson with his first touchdown pass since the end of the 2011 season. Seattle with the second best home record in the NFC since 2002 behind only the Green Bay Packers as the ball refuses to stay on the tee. You know, we used to, if we had a penalty on the kickoff where we had to re-kick, we would always tell our kicker to make sure it falls off the tee at least twice so that we can catch our breath before <laughs> we have to cover the kick again. I don't think that's the case here. Let's go adjusting the hold a little bit. Now he's ready. Denard Robinson takes it on a hop and takes a knee. Very close to going across the goal line. Well, tonight, join all your favorite stars at the Emmys. And don't miss special performances by Carrie Underwood and Elton John. Neil Patrick Harris hosts the Emmy Awards live tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific only, CBS. I'll tune into that. Big night here on CBS. Big day for Doug Baldwin with the touchdown catch, 35 yards. Penny from the gun, and the Seahawks jumped. Well, now you can tell the Seahawks players are Outside. not pulling off. Defense number 72, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, still first down. We talk about these players being hyped up to play, but the, the youth shows itself. Jacksonville, 
and Seattle, both among the youngest teams in the National Football League. Seattle, you've got to like where this roster is headed. They're already Super Bowl contenders, and they are young to boot. I mean, it, it's getting better and better for Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll has done just a remarkable job loading this roster with talent. Penny lost it. Sees some strikes. And he'll be caught and pushed out of bounds at the 15 by Earl Thomas. Yeah, this was a miscommunication in the secondary. They're going to just, both players are going to just freeze their feet and leave him completely uncovered. Both linebackers, neither one turned their hips to run with the receiver. He got left all by himself. And Henny saw it. Four catches now for 83 yards for Cecil Schwartz. He tried a career high last week against the Raiders with eight catches for 93 yards. First and ten from the 16. Henny. Again, trying to hit Cecil Shorts. Incomplete. And that looked like a, a miscommunication there on the offensive side. As you'll see the tight end go out. Shorts comes underneath. And that ball was thrown as though it was going to be a hook to the outside. And Shorts continued in on the end cut. It turned into a tip ball pass defended. Inside of a minute remaining in the third. Second and ten for Jacksonville. Maurice Jones through. Down to around the 15. 15 carries, 35 yards for the veteran Maurice Jones through. There's a question mark whether or not he'd be able to go today. Personnel change and Mojo goes to the sidelines. Justin Forsett checks in on third and nine. his progression and incomplete Stephen Burton and he would have been well short of a first down anyway this defense of the Seahawks is really forcing Chad Henney to get rid of the football so fast and their receivers for Jacksonville are being enveloped by these DB you see there Richard Sherman he doesn't retreat at all at, the, at that snap he's not afraid of the deep ball at all he sits right down at the snap and lets the receiver run to him and breaks on it. And Chad Henney had no window to throw it. 33-yard field goal try. Only the second field goal attempt of the season for Josh Scobie. Drills it through. And it's 38-10. to 10. Six seconds remaining now in the third. Get inside the mind of a quarterback. Join Phil Simms, Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, and Adam Shine on NFL Monday QB. Tomorrow at 6.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Speaking of quarterbacks, a quarterback comparison. Russell Wilson, 202 yards with four touchdown passes equaling his career high. Chad Henney completing less than 50% with the one interception. Russell Wilson still buckled up, but we suspect he's seen his last action of the day. He's still a second-year guy, so you know you, you you take you take the ball out of the hands of any other most other starters in the league. They've already got the baseball cap on. You know they're standing off by themselves. He looks like he's about ready to cover a punt. <laughs> You know, if Pete turned to him and said, I want you in on the kick coverage, you just know he's not even going to hesitate. He's going to run right out there. He'd be saying, he'd be saying what do you want me, L4 or L5? I mean, that, that he's a football player. You get really got to tip your hat to the guy. Jeremy Lane back deep to receive this. Hangs it out to the yard deep. Slides down at the 20. As we have reached the end of the third quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. There you go. 38 to 10. Seahawks. And we'll return to Seattle after this message and a word from your local.
the station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. <clears throat> Seattle takes over first and ten. They spotted it at the 21-yard line as we start the final quarter. Michael remains in the game. He's the deep back, the rookie out of Texas A&M, and he gets the toss so on the right side. Nice little burst. Probably made something out of nothing on that play. As Tavares Jackson continues to play quarterback for the Seahawks, Russell Wilson taking the rest of the day off. We recap what happened for him. The quick misdirection touchdown to get the Seahawks on the board first, and then the second touchdown, the third touchdown. Yeah, the fourth touchdown, too. Great all-around athlete. He played baseball in the Colorado Rockies minor league system. And in his one year at Wisconsin, he took the Badgers to the Rose Bowl. Jackson keeps it rolling out. Hits the rookie, Luke Wilson. And he's got another Seattle first down. Luke Wilson, the athletic rookie. Fifth round pick out of Rice. That was good for eight yards. The best case scenario for the Seahawks right here is to absolutely control this football. You look back at the games they had earlier in the year. The last, the last two, the weeks one and two of the season, they were able to drain the clock for the last four and a half minutes of both those games and just control it. And they would love to do that today with Tavares Jackson. Michael. Ben move. And down across the 35 to around the 36. Foot, football coaches always tell you everybody likes to run it when they don't expect you to run it, and everybody likes to throw it when they don't expect you to throw it, but if you can run the football when they know you're going to run the football, then you're a football team, and you're going to be a really good one, and both these clubs know it. At this point of this game, with 13-20 and counting, Jacksonville knows they're going to get a belly full of the run game of the Seahawks. Chance to test the rookie. He's alone in the backfield. Michael. Met in the backfield by Puzlesny. Once again, let's check in with JB and Coach Cower for an update on the Falcons and the Dolphins. Miami looking at 3-0, and Coach. I'll tell you what, Deion Sims, first touchdown of his career from Ryan Tannehill, second of the day. They finish the drive. They take the lead 27-23 with 26 seconds to go. Dolphins been looking for a replacement for Dan Marino forever. Back to Bill McAtee. Steve Tasker. How about that? The Dolphins with the chance to go 3-0 against a tough Atlanta squad. Third and eight, Jackson. Up the sideline and almost a one-handed grab by Sidney Rice, who was pretty well covered by Blackman, his former teammate. He almost made a catch like his teammate Baldwin made just a few minutes ago in the end zone. As you see him reach out with his right hand and almost cradle it to his body in bounds for the first down. Just couldn't pull it in. And you're right, he was well, well covered by Will Blackman, who was with this club up until about three weeks ago. So we'll see John Ryan standing back at about the 20. Kick it away to Will Blackman, who's back at the 25 with Jacksonville. He's spotting the ball. Just under 12 and a half minutes remaining. 38 to 10. Seattle. And that was partially blocked. That's going to be question as to where and who touched it first they're going to down the ball with the 48 another look good field position coming up for Jacksonville 12 15 left to go Jaguars take over at their own 48 yard line Maurice Jones through maybe a yard Mike Morgan made the stop Jacksonville the first 10 quarters of the season scored just 11 points, two of those on a safety. The third quarter today, they scored 10 points, so a little bit of a 
glimmer of hope for Jacksonville. We talked to Gus Bradley about what he needed to do with the Jaguars. He said, really, you have to come in and try to change the culture. You bring in a lot of young guys. You find out who can stick. He has the full support of the owner, Shad Khan, who understands where the team is, and it's going to take a little time to turn things around. Second and nine for Jacksonville. Henning to the outside, incomplete. Shorts the intended receiver, covered by Walter Thurman. And another aspect of this Jag Jaguars team that you didn't mention, Dave Caldwell, the general manager, also, they continue to rinse players through this roster. They bring guys in every week to work out. They're all constantly looking to upgrade at every position, and I know a lot of people don't really see that that goes on, but every week, new players are brought in to be evaluated so that they can upgrade the guys they have on their team athletically, let alone experience uh, with experience and youth. Third and nine. And Henning wants to take a timeout. 11.23 left to play. Seattle with a comfortable advantage, 38 to 10. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon Edge. Get that new phone feeling again and again. Pizza Hut. Make it great. And by the U.S. Postal Service. Schedule your free package pickup today. And we're back. Seahawks can't look. <laughs> Third and nine. Henning guns it. And it will depend on where they mark his forward progress. He appears to be about a yard short. Cecil Shorts with the catch driven back by Byron Maxwell. And the Jacksonville Jaguars will keep their offense on the field. And why not? They're going to go no huddle. They made some. They bring in Maurice Jones Drew and the fullback. They're going to try and power this in with no huddle. Fourth and one. Maurice Jones through with the first down and burst through, upended at the 35. And that will move the chains. Earl Thomas made the stop after a gain of eight. And I think Gus Bradley did the right thing there. That sends a message to your players. Gives them a chance to have some success in a game where they're not having much. And it gives them a chance to stay on the football field and do something positive. That's a great job, a great call by a head coach. Showing confidence in his players despite the score. Henny back shoulder to Cecil Schwartz, who makes a nice Cecil adjustment Jones! and the catch. Come on, baby. Come on, man. 17 yards on the completion. He's working against Maxwell on the left side of the defense. And this is another one of those back throws. Maxwell wanted the push off by Schwartz. Good Cecil Schwartz over 100 yards, six catches for 108. Play action, Henny up the sideline and overthrew his intended receiver, Alan Reisner, the tight end. Reisner had a couple steps. Watch the physicality that Seattle's going to give right here. Doesn't care if you're a doesn't care if you're a Seahawk or not. I mean, a tight end or not. You're going to get hit at the line of scrimmage. Thurman working there against Reisner. Walter Thurman had slipped, so that's why Reisner was open, but they couldn't complete it. So second and ten. Lane Gabbert looking on. This crowd still in full throat. Penny. To Maurice Jones through with some running room. Mojo does not step out of bounds, just dives forward toward the Personal marker. Foul. Rough on the passer. Defense number 72. No hit on the quarterback. After this is the goal. Automatic first down. Late flag, and they call it on Michael Bennett. And that puts the ball inside the five-yard line. We'll watch here as Henny steps up to throw this football out to the, his right. And uh, Bennett comes in off the block by Eugene Monroe. 
So that gives Jacksonville first and goal from inside the five. Jones Drew. Tag close to the two. You know, I'll tell you, if, if Jacksonville can punch this in and score 17 points against the Seahawks defense, there's going to be some positives they can walk away from this field with in a season that's not going very well. I know it sounds crazy in a 38-10 beatdown right now, but this is a team that's still looking to improve. Jordan Todman finds the end zone. And this team, Jacksonville, is going to get this film, and they're going to have a lot of good things to point out. Todman's going to come up and look for his spot, and it's going to open wide up right over on the hash mark, just outside the hash marks. As Todman gets there, there is nobody there. And you, you wonder sometimes what positives the coaching staff can get out of a game, but it's never as bad as it looks, and it's never as good as it looks if you're a Seahawk. So there are a lot of things that are going to be teachable from this game. Scobie with the extra point, the first career touchdown for Jordan Todman in his first year out of UConn. 38-17, Seattle. We're back, the hands team is on, anticipating the onside kick, but booted away into the end zone. Jeremy Lane takes the knee, they'll bring it out to the 20. 9.06 left to play. Tavares Jackson back on the field, 38-17. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Microsoft Surface. Click in and do more. It's the monster of all Mondays with an all-new night of comedy, the premiere of How I Met Your Mother, Two Broke Girls, and Mom. Starring Anna Ferris and Allison Janney. That's tomorrow only CBS. Seahawks take over. First and 10 for their own 20. Tate. And he's got a Seahawk first down. Because Lesney made the stop. This offense taking the field, you can see right there. They're, they're not taking their foot off the gas. But there's Jackson whipping that ball out to Tate for the open play and that's uh, that's a play we hadn't seen yet this game so they're not really folding up their playbook and putting it away either five catches for 88 yards for golden tate first down for the seahawks jackson lost it luke wilson still on his feet finally dragged down inside the 35 Luke Wilson, the rookie from Rice, a pickup of 35 yards. Well, this is the play that we saw Russell Wilson run earlier. He's going to come across the formation, get lost in the traffic, get some depth to stay away. As he's the underneath tight end, they send both tight ends across to give Tavares Jackson two targets. And, of course, you see Wilson breaking one tackle and getting up the sideline. That's the kind of play that the Seahawks run a lot because of the mobility of their quarterback, Russell Wilson. Well, Blackman slow getting up on a knee. Timeout on the field. 8.01 left to play. Well, Luke Wilson breaking up the sidelines. All 6'5", 252 pounds of him. And Blackman, Will Blackman comes in, and you can see him just crumple as it looks like his shoulder took the heat of that hit from Wilson down the sidelines made it off the field but they're examining him as the game continues Jacksonville getting thinner at defensive back as another catch Kellen Davis stripped up otherwise he would have scored and again let's go back to New York for an update with coach Shin JB Jets bouncing back I tell you after losing a 26 lead and tied 2020 by Buffalo Geno Smith hooks up with Santonio Holmes 69 yards that's his second touchdown pass of the day for Geno Smith he has one rushing as well five or uh, nine minutes to go is 27 20 New York Jets all right time permitting we will take you there Bill McAtee Steve Tasker JB thank you Turban 
now just inside the five. Seattle threatening again, leading 38 to 17. A few minutes ago, I said they're running this offense with the mobile with the mobile quarterback in mind, like Luke Wilson, or I mean, like Russell Wilson. As you see there, as Davis goes down the slot, well, they're running the same offense with Tavares Jackson in the game as well. They're letting him throw the football, and Tavares has to be able to run the same offense that Russell Wilson runs, so they're using him to roll out and everything. They're not missing a beat with their backup quarterback. Jackson keeps it. Dallas for the end zone, touchdown. That's another great example of it. At the Open today, we mentioned that Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson wanted to get their offense on track, and I think a 44-point outburst is evidence that uh, they didn't have too much to worry about. They have been spot on all the way around offensively. Tough homecoming for Gus Bradley. Nice bit of work for Tavares Jackson. And Pete Carroll getting a look at his entire roster. Houska with the extra point. It's now 45-17 with six and a half minutes left to play. This misdirection quarterback keep. It's a read option by Jackson, and he was looking at the defense, and he decided to keep it, went one-on-one, -on -one and was able to get just enough to get into the end zone that was a read by the quarterback to whether to keep it or to give it away and he made the right decision five plays 80 yards Jackson with his sixth career rushing touchdown Seahawks obviously don't talk about it specifically here early in the season but certainly there's a level of expectation that this team is built to go deep into the postseason the phrases that you hear are championship football every week and playing to a standard regardless of the opponent and that standard doesn't change from week to week and we've seen it here today against the Jaguars and also Pete Carroll is trying to foster a culture to be good long term to have a program that will be able to be sustained now it's just been busy today Robinson is the deep man for Jacksonville, five yards deep in the end zone. Takes it at the goal line. And finally tripped up as he crosses the 25-yard line. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS brings on regional games and one matchup will take you to Wembley Stadium in London as Big Ben and the Steelers clash with Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. And Geno Smith and the Jets take on Chris Johnson and the Titans. Check your local listings. It all begins with J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower on the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Fans here in the stadium reacting to a, an update on the scoreboard. The Colts 27, the 49ers 7. And this is uh, after that bitter game they had a week, just this last week. Fans still excited to see the Niners get beat. Henny. And that is caught by Ace Sanders, who made a nice move to get free and a nice catch. Had a chance to talk to Ace, the rookie out of South Carolina. Had an outstanding career playing for Steve Spurrier. Dad Tracy played with Deion Sanders at Florida State. Great attitude when we talked with him. Yes. Out of bounds at the 47, a pickup of 20 yards. His dad was the other corner across from Deion Sanders. Mojo smothered. He'll lose a yard. Talk to Ace about playing against this Seattle secondary. It's really the best secondary he's ever faced in his football career on any level. And he said, you know, I'm just going to go out and do my best. I have a new play after every whistle. It'll be a good experience for him. And these Seahawks are tough in every phase, but especially that secondary. All pro bowlers and all pros. Second and 11. Henny, that's a nice catch by Shorts. 
That was a nice catch by Short in traffic, knowing he was going to get hit when he came down with it. Inside release to the outs to the inside edge of the numbers, reaches behind him and plucks that out of the air, knowing the, the hurt is coming, and he did a great job to pull that in. What a nice throw by Henny as well. 21 yards, seven catches for Cecil Schwartz for 129 yards. Inside of five minutes remaining. Game that was really decided in the third quarter. Henny. Let's see if they rule it an incomplete pass. They do. Yeah, Henny was going to throw it. He saw he. Michael Bennett had the pressure, Steve. Well, he saw a teammate over there was going to throw it to him. Then he realized it was it was Uche Winery, I believe. It might have been or perhaps it was Jokel. Jokel, yeah. The Luke Jokel, the rookie, was standing there and he was going to throw it to the jersey. He saw him, then he realized it was his offensive lineman and tried to pull the string and threw it into the ground. And he making his second consecutive start today for Jacksonville. And the Jaguars will take a timeout. With 4.38 left to play when you look at the standings here in the nfc west with the niners and seattle and the seattle seahawks are just about to go three and oh and that will give them a commanding lead at the early spot and we spoke about it you can laugh if you want to but some of these teams he plays so well early in the season you forget how long it takes to get to the playoffs and a team like Seattle is playing so well, there's just there's just no way to get sharper. And we talked to Pete Carroll specifically about that. And he said, look, I just want my guys to play consistently at a high level. We don't want to get too emotionally invested, too high or too low. We just want a steady play of excellence as we go through the season. And they have gotten that through the first three weeks. Comfortably ahead here, 45-17. And he steps up, fires to the sideline again at Schwartz. Another first down. And you can see here as this second half has worn on, this Jacksonville offense, you know, has started to do some positive things. They've done it each week, and you can say what you want about, and they've, they've taken some heat over doing their most of their work in garbage time, as some people call it. But improvement is improvement, and this is a Jacksonville Jaguar team that has needed a lot of it, and they continue to get better although it seems in small increments. Spotted inside the 20 at the 19. First and 10 for Jacksonville. Henny throws it in the dirt at the feet of Maurice Jones-Drew. Well, if you're Jacksonville, Steve, how tough is it to figure out what you've got on offense when you're without Justin Blackman? We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Mercedes Lewis has been week to week. Really, Maurice Jones-Drew has played, but not fully healthy. And you add the questions of quarterback to that, so not easy for Gus Bradley to figure out exactly what he's got. Well, and you're right, and they were still wondering about Blaine Gabbard and his ability to be their guy, and they still haven't found that out because he's got stitches in his throwing hand and can't throw. Second and ten. Cogman in the backfield. Henny. Now to Burton. Physical receiver. Muscles his way down inside the 15. Gain of five. And the mantra, as always, we said earlier, for Gus Bradley is just told his guys just to get better. And that really has taken the pressure off them about worrying about needing or having to win, worrying about the finish line. He said, worry about your next step. Worry about getting closer to the end the result that we're all looking for and improving your own game, and the result will take care of itself. Third and five. Eighth play of this drive. Henny. Intercepted. Cam Chancellor. And the big man motors downfield. Henny telegraphed his pass a little bit. He stared his receiver down. And Cam Chancellor jumped in from back in the secondary. He's going to look at Henny. See those receivers come and start to sort out. Jumps right in front of Williams and starts back the other way. Looks like a linebacker out there. 
Hicks is a big man. So another turnover for the Seahawks who came in leading the NFL with seven takeaways. At the middle, Kristen Michael into Jacksonville territory. Well, 2003 was the last time the Jags started 0-3. They played the Colts in their third game. Reggie Wayne caught that touchdown pass. Byron Leftwich threw a touchdown after replacing Mark Brunel in the fourth quarter. But too little too late as the Colts won it. 23-13, Leftwich made his first NFL start the following week and would start 21 straight games for Jacksonville. Second and three. Michael. And the rookie gets him close to a first down. Looks like they're going to give him the spot past the 46-yard line on towards the 45, and yeah, they're going to move the chains. First week that Christian Michael has been active. Second round pick out of Texas A&M. The first pick in April by the Seahawks. He did not have a first rounder. And Pete Carroll, and as you said earlier, he was, they were excited to get a look at him in game situations. They liked him. He's been practicing extremely well, and they're anxious to see how he can contribute. Side of two and a half minutes remaining, they give it back to Michael. Down to the 42, which will take us down to the two-minute warning. So 45-17 Seattle on their way to 3-0 as we have reached the two-minute warning. Russell Wilson finally has the helmet off. He's been on the sideline since the third quarter. That's another first down for Seattle. Christian Michael. Russell Allen made the stop. I guess with, with the lead of that of that size, the two-minute warning, you can take your helmet off and unstrap, at least even unstrap, <laughs> unstrap the chin strap until this point. This offense for Seattle have got a, a, a number of playmakers. Four guys have made runs of 10 yards or more, and also six different guys have caught a pass of 15 yards or more. So they are spreading the football around, and this was a, a day when the Seahawks looked as sharp as they could possibly look. Victory formation. Seattle has never started the season 4-0. and Here's a look at their 3-0 and starts. At least their first since 2006, but unable in the past really to build on those. Never more than 10 wins in a season. Pete would like to change that. Well, this is a team that was 11 and 5 last year and really went on that run in the second half of the season that really grabbed the attention of the entire country behind a rookie quarterback in Russell Wilson. So that will do it. Seahawks officially 3-0. And Jacksonville, their struggles continue. They begin 0-3. Really only positives to take away for the Seattle Seahawks. No letdown after the big win over San Francisco last Sunday night. Final score 45-17. For Steve Tasker, this is Bill McAtee saying so long from Seattle. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. And now, let's go to JB in New York.